Hi there, everybody. I'm Randy Murphy, Epidemiologist and Director of Disease Surveillance at the Mobile County Health Department. This is a carrier mobile phone with you everywhere kind of day. Um, today is Monday, January 3rd. I'm here to give you the Mobile County Health Department update on the impact of the COVID-19 epidemic on Mobile County that's now entering our third calendar year of um, COVID-19 um, epidemic in the United around the world in the United States and Alabama and in Mobile, of course. So we have passed the 81,000 number for the number of COVID cases since counting began in March of 2020. Um, 265 cases were reported yesterday, but that does not really tell the whole story. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, zero deaths were reported yesterday and 14 additional people were identified as hospitalized with COVID-19. That brings the number, the daily number yesterday of people being in the hospitalized diagnosed with COVID-19 to 96. So this is a wildly dramatic increase. Just a week ago, we were down somewhere, you know, in around the 30 or 35 mark. And now we have, you know, three or four times the number of people hospitalized with COVID-19. Um, that is concerning. It is, of course, moving in the wrong direction, though compared to the total number of cases that have been reported, we're happy to see that that number is still um, lower than we have seen with previous waves of COVID-19. So just talking about um, what we saw last week, you know, the week before Christmas, we had around 275 cases. Then the week of Christmas, we saw a tripling of cases reported to us. That number was 888, I believe. And then, um, as I mentioned last week, we were on track to triple again or either greater than triple. And in fact, we had five times more cases reported to us last week than reported the week of Christmas. So between the weekends of Christmas and New Year, 4,915 cases were reported to us. This puts any other weekly number in the dust it is, um, you know, a few hundred more cases reported than the peak that we saw in August and September, which was around the first or second week of August when we had around 4,300 cases reported in one week. That was the peak of the outbreak in August and September. And so we have gone, you know, um, just in one week, five times the number of COVID cases reported to um, nearly 5,000 reported just last week alone. Just an incredible explosion um, in the number of cases that we're seeing. And again, all of this attributed to people who got Delta in August and September, their 90-day you know, disease-induced immunity, that 90-day period is over. We have low vaccination rates in our younger populations, which have the highest levels of COVID transmission because they're the ones that are out and about. They will have milder illness, so they may be transmitting COVID without recognizing it. And of course, we have Omicron now, which is highly, much more highly transmissible, though thought to be um, less severe than previous variants of COVID. So last week, we um, had about 40, 40 to 50 uh, patient samples that were sequenced, and about 90% of those were Omicron and the West, rest were Delta. So we have seen, you know, the, the amount of uh, the, the percent of our cases caused, the percent due to Omicron has increased in just um, since the first week. So we went to almost nothing to about 50% to now we're around 90% Omicron. And again, highly transmissible though Omicron um, looks like it causes less severe illness and you get sicker faster. So ordinarily, you're on average, you're going to get sick on, a, on or about day three um, instead of day five, as with previous versions of, of um, SARS-CoV-2. So let me talk just a little bit about some of the other measures. We've talked about the fact that hospitalizations are going up, so trending in the wrong direction, but they are um, nowhere near the numbers that we saw in August when we had this high number of cases reported on a weekly basis. So that um, is good news that at least for now, it looks like um, hospitalizations may not be as high as they were in August and September. Um, again, we're keeping an eye on it because this thing is moving so fast, it's going, the curve is going to look quite a bit different than our previous curve. So. Um, while we can sort of gather some um, information that we've learned from previous waves, you know, corona continues to 
teach us that um, it is in control, not us. So I also wanted to mention that thankfully the number of deaths reported is still very low. So this is really good news, although, you know, hospitalizations and, and deaths tend to lag behind uh, the number of cases. So we expect hospitalizations to lag five to 10 days behind cases and deaths will then lag another five to 10 days behind. So just, um, you know, keep your eyes on it. I'm keeping my fingers and toes crossed that we don't see record numbers of hospitalizations with this wave like we saw with the Delta wave back in August and September. Probably the, other than having 5,000 cases in one week, the other thing that just blows my mind is that, you know, the week before Christmas, we had around six, 7% of our tests were positive. The week of Christmas, around 17, 18% were positive. And now in that week between Christmas and New Year, uh, 53% of tests were positive. Now, I know there's a big range um, in the data that we have collected. Let's see, I think I have that number here someplace. Our... Oh, darn it, Mark. I'm missing some sticky notes. Do you mind looking on my desk to see if there are some yellow sticky notes? So in our uh, location, our testing location and vaccine location at um, the Festival Center at the corner of Mont Lamar and Airport, last week we tested around 3,700 people in five days with about a 32-33% positivity. So it is really high, but um, you know, community-wide, it's um, upwards just over 53%. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, this is how this day has been today. Everything goes on a sticky note. Okay, so last, last week at COVID Way, we were open just five days because of the holiday. 3,689 tests, sorry, I misspoke, with 29% of them being positive, and we gave 661 vaccines there last week. You know, we know that that waits for testing are long. We know that there's starting, starting to be a shortage of test kits nationally, and this is definitely impacting Alabama and Mobile and the Mobile County Health Department. So please, if you are sick and you're not able to get a test for whatever reason, you can't find one on the shelf to take it home, you can't wait in line, you know, you go to a place and they run out. If you are sick, and can't get tested, please stay at home. Um, don't feel like you can go to work or school or out in the out in the public because you just, you know, you don't know that you're positive because you didn't get tested. That's really not what we, we wanted to, to, to happen. If you are sick, you can't get tested, we need you to stay home. Um, because whatever you have, if you're coughing, sneezing, if you're running a fever, have the traditional um, symptoms of respiratory illness, trouble, you know, a little trouble breathing, maybe some sinus pressure, congestion, runny nose, all of those things, you are contagious with something. And so just um, stay home until you are asymptomatic or at least your symptoms are improving for at least 24 hours. So again, don't feel like just because you can't get a test that, that you can go on about your business. Please stay home if you're sick. Okay, let's see. So in addition to having you know, high rates of COVID, high numbers of COVID um, patients with COVID reported to us and a very high um, level of percent positive. We also have COVID-19 outbreaks in 12 long-term care facilities. We have five other congregate settings that have reached out to us for help because they've had um, cases in their staff or in their residence. These are detention centers, group homes, homeless shelters, that sort of thing. So lots of um, reports out there of COVID that is wreaking havoc on different sectors of our community. So again, this is something that we've, we've talked about is that every sector of our community is going to be impacted by such high numbers of people with COVID and such high COVID positive numbers. The health department is feeling this, the strain. We have many more people out with COVID or exposed to COVID than we have ever seen in the past. You know, we hear of businesses and other governmental and non-governmental private agencies that are stressed because they have staff that are calling out. Healthcare facilities, long-term care facilities, detention centers, all running low on staff because many of them are being called out because they either have COVID or they have been around someone who's been exposed to COVID. So just, um, Hang in there. I hope that 
we we may have a a sh even though our peak has really um, jumped up super quick. What I hope is that we will have a shorter time this way. So hopefully, rather than the wave lasting a good you know eight ten weeks, hopefully it will last a shorter um, period of time. Now, the only reason that might be okay is if we have fewer hospitalizations, because generally when we have a really fast peak, it means that we also put a burden on our healthcare facilities and our, our hospitals. But um, so if we do see something that peaks really quickly and starts going down really quickly, maybe we have about another four to six weeks before we can start, you know, see ourselves coming out of this wave but it will happen so stay optimistic do the things you need to do in your community we've been through this three times before and we've come out on the other side yes we have lost loved ones family members co-workers to avoid that please get vaccinated and get boosted it keeps can keep a lot of people from being hospitalized or or dying with COVID if you get vaccinated and you get boosted. So that's the way to try to, um, to make it through this, this next wave or this current wave of Omicron transmission is to get vaccinated, get boosted, stay at home if you're sick, avoid gatherings of any sort indoors. Let me read the statement that Dr. Eichel provided today. Some sites in Mobile County have reported community transmission test rate at around 50% positive. MCHD last week tested 4,000 people and we had about a 30% positivity rate. 5% um, or less is the desired threshold. That is where we need our community to get back to. So Omicron is the predominant variant representing approximately 80% of positive cases. Obviously Omicron is highly detected, de contagious, sorry. Um, here's the quote, with this increased community transition rate, MCHD recommends that anyone over two years, regardless of their own vaccine status, wear a mask in public, maintain social distancing, and frequently wash hands for the next several weeks, large gatherings should be avoided. If you've not done so yet, please get vaccinated, and if you're eligible, please get the booster shot. As we have broken the community transmission three times in the past, Let's all work together for the next several weeks to gain, to again have success. So again, uh, um, comments from our health officer, um, Dr. Bert Eichel. Couple other just announcements to make. Last week we talked about the FDA had placed a pause on some of the um, monoclonal antibodies to treat COVID-19. Those have, have been, um, that pause has been removed. So some of those antibodies are flowing again. Again, remember there's just one um, citrovimab that's useful against the Omicron variant, but um, in areas where you still have Delta circulating, some of those other monoclonal antibodies may be greatly beneficial. So the pause has been lifted on those. I also wanted to mention that a lot of people are asking when the antiviral pills are gonna be available. So I checked healthdata.gov just before coming into the um, Facebook Live. You also can go there to check yourself, healthdata.gov. And it looks like um, Paxlovid, which is the Pfizer antiviral, has shipped or is will be shipped very soon to a Walmart in Mobile County. So that antiviral should be available soon, though in very short and very limited supplies. Um, at a Walmart in Mobile, you can go to healthdata.gov to see the details. You, you have to see your provider. Your provider has to call in a prescription in order for the Walmart pharmacy to issue that antiviral drug to you. So please um, talk to your healthcare provider about that. Do not go to Walmart asking to buy um, Paxlovid um, over the counter or from your pharmacist. All right, and then there was just one question from the media asking about the fourfold increase in hospitalization in the past two weeks. Yes, this is concerning, but again, if you compare the number of hospitalized this week to the number um, hospitalized in August when we had nearly 5,000, I think you'll see that it's quite a bit lower than what we had seen before, but this peak has really happened fast. So it will be another 10 days or so before we see the full fallout 
of how many people will be hospitalized because they got infected with COVID last week. So stay tuned. Um, for all those cases, the positive cases last week, do we have any way to know who's vaccinated and unvaccinated? So we do know that, yes, thank you, Mark. And I don't have, let me hold on a second. So we do have some information on the percent vaccinated and unvaccinated from the data that we collect at the, um, can I get a tissue please? For the data that we collect at Festival Center. And I'm gonna see if I can pull that up. Bear with me for just a moment. I might not be able to find it on the fly. This is how we get business done these days. I'm sure like everybody that we're, thank you. Just trying to see if I can get this for you. If not, I'll respond by email. So we know that the number of cases, more people vaccinated are getting Omicron than got Delta. So I do want, I, there is, you know, we used to say that the overwhelming majority of people who um, were hospitalized and who got COVID back in August and September were unvaccinated. That number has come down somewhat again, and it's attributable to so many infections out there. When you have such a high positivity rate, it's really difficult for even the, um, the vaccinated people to avoid coming in contact with COVID-19. So I don't, I can't find those numbers, but I will look them up if you'll remind me, Mark. And then what's the other one? Um. Uh, what do you recommend for testing for those adults with special needs who are very who are very strong, extremely low frustration threshold and might not sit still for a PCR test? Is the antigen test the only thing available? Uh, there is no exposure that I'm aware of when she's fully vaccinated and boosted. So to take a specimen for PCR doesn't take any longer than an antigen test. I think the difference with PCR is that you don't always get immediate results like you do at the festival center with the rapid antigen test that we run. If you are immunocompromised or have disabilities, if, it's, if your mobility is difficult, what I recommend you doing is going to the USA testing facility at the Civic Center. You can stay in your car, you can get your um, swab um, taken, and I think you have results in 24 to 48 hours. So that really is a, a great option for people who have underlying medical conditions, maybe don't want to, you know, walk into a clinic where we know that one out of every three people is positive with COVID. I get that. It's kind of a scary prospect. Or if you have mobility or, or other situations that might make it difficult for you to get out of the car and maybe wait in line inside. So for people that, that, um, that have those special needs, um, please consider going to the University of South Alabama drive through clinic at the Civic Center. Are there more? Yeah. Uh, what is the plan to ensure we have enough early intervention such as um, uh, monoclonal antibodies available? So right now, monoclonal antibodies are in, in very limited supply. Um, antivirals in, are in really limited supply. These are treatments, right? What we have plenty of right now is vaccine, a preventive measure. So vaccine, vaccination and boosting is still the best measure that anyone can take to prevent getting COVID and to prevent getting hospitalized or potentially dying if you contract COVID. Prevention with vaccination is the best mitigation tool that we have right now. The other ones, monoclonal antibodies, antivirals, other treatments like remdesivir are in limited supply and it's just not that easy. Right now you can walk in almost anywhere and get a COVID vaccine. Well, the question is updates about what's happening at the schools. And I have, don't have it in front of me, but the health, because of the high transmission in the, in the county, I mean, our risk level is high right now. We have, have you know, upwards of 30 to 50% positivity rate. You know, less than five is, is a safer zone um, than, than we're ill now. We were just there a couple of weeks ago, right? A few weeks ago, we were in a moderate level of transmission and we had less than 5% positivity. And very rapidly, we got ourselves into a state of high community transmission. So right now, the Mobile County Health Department is recommending that schools require 
masks for anyone who can wear them. Anyone to and over, regardless of vaccine status, we are asking that schools require masks at all indoor settings in schools, of course, you know, when they, except when they're having to eat or drink or take meds, that sort of thing. So that is our strong recommendation. And it's also the recommendation for the rest of the county. Right now, with so much COVID transmission in Mobile County, everybody, regardless of, of COVID vaccination status, needs to be wearing a mask when indoors and avoiding gatherings of any kind. Anything else, Mark? Uh, what about the rapid test? Does it can detect the Omicron? So the question is, can the rapid test detect the Omicron variant? The answer is yes, it can, but not as well as it could detect Delta and Alpha and SARS-CoV-2. So what we're trying to remind providers is that if you have a symptomatic person in front of you, or someone who's been exposed to someone with COVID in front of you and they test negative on a rapid test, please pull a specimen and send it for PCR. Because right now, we, we're still learning about the accuracy of the, um, the rapid test to detect Omicron and it looks like it's slightly less accurate than the rapid test are in detecting previous variants. So if you, if it, if you look like you have COVID or you know you've been exposed with someone COVID, if you test negative, please consider um, getting a PCR test. All right, Mark says that's it for today. So again, um, we're just asking everybody to please stay safe out there. We will likely do another Facebook Live update on Thursday at 2.30. Mark and I, I guess we're both going to be here. So please send in your questions. We're happy to try to share news. You, you know, guys, right now we're getting into that another situation where um, things are changing so quickly, it's hard for us to keep up. In fact, CDC had their weekly call scheduled for today at 1, and they canceled it um, earlier today and just said, we're trying to gather science, we're trying to gather information to update all of our, all of our guidance documents. Um, we'll communicate that with you at a later date. So even things are changing you know, too rapidly for CDC right now to, to hold their regular calls. So please be patient with us. It is very likely that I will say something on a newscast or on a Facebook Live that within a couple hours or the next day will um, will be changed or updated and be different. So um, please stay tuned and um, you know keep listening to your trusted sources of information as we are in this you know very unprecedented um, you know Omicron wave of the COVID-19 pandemic in Mobile County. So stay safe, everyone, and we'll talk to you on Thursday.